Episode 98, Bible equals Biblos. Britannica.com states, Biblos, modern Jabal, also spelled Jabal or Jabel, biblical Jabal, ancient seaport, the site of which is located on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, about 20 miles north of the modern city of Beirut, Lebanon. It is one of the oldest continuously inhabited towns in the world. The name Byblos is Greek. Papyrus received its early Greek name, Byblos, Bibelinos, from its being exported to the Aegean through Byblos. Hence, the English word Bible is derived from Byblos as the papyrus book. Modern archaeological excavations have revealed that Byblos was occupied at least by the Neolithic period in the New Stone Age from 8000 to 4000 BC, and that during the 4th millennium BC, an extensive settlement developed there, because Byblos was the chief harbor for the export of cedar and other valuable wood to Egypt. It soon became a great trading center. It was called Kubna in ancient Egyptian and Gubla in Akkadian, the language of Assyria. Egyptian monuments and inscriptions found on the site attest to close relations with the Nile River Valley throughout the second half of the second millennium. During Egypt's 12th dynasty from 1938 to 1756 BC, Byblos again became an Egyptian dependency and the chief goddess of the city, Baalith, the mistress, with her well-known temple at Byblos, was worshipped in Egypt. After the collapse of the Egyptian New Kingdom in the 11th century BC, Byblos became the foremost city of Phoenicia. The Phoenician alphabet was developed at Byblos, and the site has yielded almost all of the known early Phoenician inscriptions most of them dating from the 10th century BC. By that time, however, the Sidonian kingdom, with its capital at Tyre, had become dominant in Phoenicia and Byblos, though it flourished into Roman times, never recovered its former supremacy. The Ark of the Covenant cherubims were compared to sarcophagus of Iram, the king of Byblos. We discussed this in episode 97. LebanonUntraveled.com states, King Iram ruled one of the greatest cities, Byblos, from where comes the word Bible, known as Jabal in the Holy Book. This ancient city was part of Phoenicia and is today located on the Lebanese coast. Here is King Iram's coffin with the two cherubims. The Ark of the Covenant had the two cherubims, which was all from Egypt. We note that the Smith's Bible Dictionary is at the Library of Congress online. The Egyptian reference is still in the picture, but not in the description. We're also in the Library of Congress to review the Codex Gigas. This is the Devil's Bible on display. The Codex Gigas, or Devil's Bible, is a large 13th century manuscript from Bohemia, one of the historical Czech lands. Renowned for its size, and its striking full-page rendition of the devil found on page 577. It contains a number of parts, the Old and New Testaments, two works of Josephus Flavius, Isidore of Seville's Ethymologies, the standard textbooks for teaching medicine in the Middle Ages, known as the Art of Medicine, the 12th century chronicle of the Bohemians of Cosmos of Prague and a calendar. The art of medicine symbol, Catechus medical symbol, chrome, is the symbol or associated with medicine and health care, such as doctors or hospitals. It's a staff with two snakes coiled around it. At the National Library of Sweden, the Codex Gigas is on display, and a picture of Satan is on one of the pages. According to a legend, a monk who broke his vows was sentenced to be walled up alive. He begged for clemency, promised to write a book that included all human knowledge in just one night. At midnight, he realized he would never succeed in his task. So he prayed to the fallen angel Lucifer to help him. The devil delivered. So the monk drew the devil's portrait on page 577 of his manuscript in gratitude. In reality, one monk did write the entire book, 
but it took him approximately 25 to 30 years to complete it. The oversized book was initially kept at a monastery in Bohemia, now the Czech Republic, but it was stolen by the Swedes during the Thirty Years' War and taken to Stockholm as war booty in 1649. Now the book is housed at the National Library of Sweden. The white leather volume adorned with fancy gigas is about three feet tall and weighs a staggering 165 pounds. To protect this 800-year-old book from the damages of air and light, it's kept at a climate control case. Okay, so this little dude created the Codex Gigas and included the Old and the New Testament, as well as the art of medicine and other things. <sighs> Wordsrated.com states, on average, there are 100 million Bibles printed each year. It's projected that there are more than 6 billion Bibles currently in print, 140% more than the estimated 2.5 billion copies in print as of 1975. The number of Bibles sold on average has more than doubled in the U.S. since 1950, with 20 million Bibles sold each year, 1.7 million Bibles sold each month, 385,000 sold each week, 55,000 sold every day, 2,300 sold per hour, 38 Bibles sold per minute, and 6 Bibles sold every 10 seconds. Now let's do some math. If we have 20 million Bibles sold each year, and let's say our average is $20 a Bible, and we know Bibles can run from 50 to 100 plus per each Bible. So from 1975 through 2022, that's about 47 years. 47 years times 400 million a year is a total of $18.8 .8 billion in revenue sales for Bibles. Now the sales of the religious books are off the chain as well. This includes all the sales from your Jakes, your Osteen, your Myers, and variant of Christian authors books that they write each year and convince many people to buy when in reality they're saying the same thing over and over again just in a different package. As of 2022 religious book sales have reached a total revenue of 758 million dollars. All of this wealth and money being accumulated with single moms and single dads are struggling. Rent is skyrocketing. The homeless are flooding the street because they can't afford to stay in their homes. But these ministers are buying gold toilets and fleets of massive jets to spread this gospel. And when they say, oh, my pastor doesn't take a salary, this is why. They don't need a salary when they're making millions upon millions with their book sales. That they say the same thing repeatedly. Joyce Meyer said years ago, she just changes the cover of the book. But the contents are the same. Educationweek.com shows a map of the United States. It shows that the critical race theory has now been banned from school curriculums in about 18 states which are in tour course. CRT is to teach the children about slavery and our black history of the Atlantic slave trade. The Atlantic slave trade is American history. And let's be clear, CRT includes not just topics on slavery, but other nonsense they always try to attach to our personal causes like feminism, etc. But think about this. They are banning our history of the Atlantic slave trade, but are freely allowing Bibles to be sold, generating billions of revenue. Make it make sense. If the Bible actually had our true history in it, would they allow it to be sold as such? Just asking a question. Personally, I don't think so. This deception runs deep, y'all. OrthodoxChristianity.com states, Ethiopian Bible is oldest and most complete on earth. Okay. They say the devil is in the details. And let's see why. World's first illustrated Christian Bible discovered at Ethiopian Monastery. The world's earliest illustrated Christian book has been saved by a British charity, which located it at a remote Ethiopian monastery. They always conveniently find stuff. The incredible Garima Gospels 
are named after a monk who arrived in the African country in the 5th century and is said to have copied them out in just one day. Beautifully illustrated, the colors are still vivid and thanks to the Ethiopian Heritage Fund, have been conserved. Abba Garima arrived from Constantinople in 494 AD, and legend has it he was able to copy the Gospels in a day because God delayed the sun from setting. Really, Christianity was introduced to Ethiopia in the 4th century. Let's not forget, Ethiopia was overtaken by Italy in 1935. The Italo-Ethiopian War in 1935-36, an armed conflict occurred that resulted in Ethiopia's subjection to Italian rule. BBC.com says, Ethiopia is Africa's oldest independent country and its second largest in terms of population. Apart from a five-year occupation by Mussolini's Italy, it has never been colonized. How is that plausible that you can contradict yourself in the same sentence? And it's okay. Mussolini took over the country for five years. Therefore, it was colonized. Professor Sulachana Asir Valton, researcher of Alexander the Great, writes in her paper, The Alexander Romance Tradition from Egypt to Ethiopia. Among the very many tentacles of the Alexander Romance Tradition is an Ethiopian tradition represented by a set of seven texts written in Ge'ez, a Semitic language that was the lingua franca of medieval Ethiopia and is still used today in Ethiopian Orthodox liturgy. And we see the Semitic language is on our timeline. These texts appear in the manuscripts dating from the 17th to the 19th centuries and were translated into English in 1896 by Sir Ernest Budge. This paper asks why the figure of Alexander the Great attracted Ethiopian writers and translators from the medieval period. The historical Alexander had not visited Ethiopia and the word itself appears only twice in the corpus. The texts do, however, show an interest in another African country, Egypt, and in particular, the city of Alexandria with the medieval Ethiopia has strong religious ties. In his recent study of the most important Ethiopic Alexander text, the Ethiopic Alexander Romance, or Zena as Kinder, History of Alexander the Great, Peter Kortar points to the dependence of Ethiopic literature from the 13th century onwards on the Christian Arabic literature of the Coptic Church in Egypt, as well as to the particularly religious image of Alexander found in the Ethiopic literature. Ethiopia was colonized, and research states that Alexander the Great's colonization in Alexandria, Egypt, did make its way to Ethiopia, and personally, Alexander probably went to Ethiopia. Let's look at the manuscripts of the Bible. Jesusfilm.org states that by comparison, the Old Testament manuscript authority of some 17,000 manuscripts is beyond impressive. 17,000 manuscripts. Institute for Creation and Research.com states the New Testament was written in 1st century AD. There are some 25,000 early manuscripts in existence almost 6,000 of which, many being only recognizable fragments, are Greek texts and the others being early translations of the Greek New Testament. Okay, the collegechurch.org illustrates an ancient manuscript comparison chart. When we talk about manuscripts, these are supposedly physical copies, whether it's on paper, or on a brick, or whatever. And you see the numbers on the chart are all over the place. And the authors of these manuscripts is another story. But some of these cats we've already talked about in the history of the Christian church series. HoustonChristianUniversity.edu states, A manuscript is a handwritten document. The word has its origin in Latin, manu, for hand, and scriptum, written. 
there are approximately 5,800 Greek manuscripts of the New Testament. In addition, there are 10,000 Latin manuscripts and 9,300 manuscripts in other languages. The New Testament autographa, the manuscripts written by the original authors, are unavailable. We can't see them. But manuscripts have been discovered that are dated as early as the 2nd century. Okay, let's look at translations. AmericanBibleSocietyNews.org answers the questions of how many English translations of the Bible there are. Their answer, I'm afraid no one can give you an exact number for the English translations and paraphrases of the Bible printed since Tyndale's New Testament of 1526. Okay. In part, this is due to the difficulty of determining what should be defined as a new translation as opposed to a correction or a revision of an existing translation. There is the additional question of how should we count translations that include not a complete Bible or Testament, but just a group of books or even a single book. And then, of course, there's the difficulty of sheer numbers. Huh. With all the caveats in mind, the number of printed English translations and paraphrases of the Bible, whether complete or not, is about 900. That's 900 just in English. Christian Network Europe News states, as of January 2023, there are over 3,600 translations of the Bible worldwide. 3,600 translations of the Bible worldwide. Revelations 22 says not to add or take away from the words of this book, but we have 900 translations just in English. Bible is from the pagan regions of Byblos, which had close ties to Egypt. The Egyptian chief goddess, Baleth had a temple in Byblos. The manuscripts of the Bible are so numerous and all over the place. These manuscripts were written by the pagan gods and the Christian church fathers. The Bible has been translated over and over again with parts changed, parts added, parts taken out. And these translations will not stop anytime soon. It's a moneymaker. Truth Wars is presenting informative facts for you to pray about and research for yourself. The deception runs deep, but our Father, the creator of heaven and earth, is bigger than the deception and way bigger than these deceivers. Don't give up on the process of finding truth, but let truth set you free. We're in this together. Love y'all, but the Father loves you more. As we seek truth, Please seek truth with us. We don't claim to know everything. We just seek the creator of heaven and earth that does know everything. Let truth roar. Let truth reign. Let truth speak. And let truth set you and your entire family free. Truth roars. Truth reigns. Truth speaks. Truth sets me free. Oh, yes, it does. Please see our podcast disclaimer at truthwars.com. And thanks for watching and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.